How you day, how you day? Welcome to another episode of Use Your Difference to Make a Difference. I'm your host, Ty Roxon, and this is just something that guards the light that usually beams through me from the camera. And I don't know why I just told you that. But let's get into the episode. Diversity and inclusion in the age of coronavirus. Diversity, equity, and inclusion during COVID-19 or the coronavirus. How can we ensure that our employees and our colleagues are better protected during moments of crisis? How can we ensure that people are seen for who they are? How can we make sure that everyone experiences their full spectrum of humanity, regardless of what's going on in the world? I've got a few letters that could show you how. So A, always check in. I'm not talking about check-in with the prototypical, hey, how are you doing? And then walk off. No, I'm talking about checking in with your colleagues, your boss, your your subordinates, and everyone around you that's involved in a project in your company or your school or in your your institution in such a way where you're saying, hey, how's the project going? How are you doing mentally today? Do you feel like we've set the right parameters for you to fulfill this project? If not, what will you need to fulfill the project? Are there other things that are bothering you that we haven't discussed? These are certain things that allow you to gain insight into who you're working with and into who you're teaching or who works for you. Now, when we don't do this, we're not able to develop empathy. We're not able to develop compassion. We're also not able to understand the worlds of the people that we lead then you never will be inclusive. So A, always check in. B, be bold about who you are. Now is the time for you, companies and institutions, to reveal who you really want to be. You know, I think a lot of times people will write their value statements or their mission statements and say, this is who we aspire to be and this is what we're saying. But be bold about who you are. Because during this time, we've seen microaggressions heighten. We've seen several marginalized groups come out and talk about things that have bothered them. We've also seen a lot of silence in response to to these claims and to these reports and to these real feelings. Are you gonna be bold about who you are? Now is not the time to shy away from difficult situations because of the revelations that have come about. A lot of revelations that have come about are the microaggressive comments that people have said, the racist comments that people have said due to the misunderstanding of the virus, or the lack of protection for several marginalized groups. Of course, a lot of companies and institutions are coming face to face with the fact that they haven't been as, I guess, protective as they should have been, or as diligent as they should have been with their health insurance and their packages and every other thing that they should have been doing. But now is not the time to be shy or to be silent. Be bold about who you are and the changes that you're willing to make. C, constantly call people in. Now this is a very important step to follow being bold because the idea of constantly calling people in is making sure that you set a calendar, a time on your calendar to ensure that every group in your company, every stakeholder in your company is being heard. And the way that you can do that is by constantly calling people in. Make note of the things that are being harmed right now. Paid time off, health insurance, you know, ability to work from home, uh, vacation days, all these things, health, you know, uh, mental health days, all these things that are constantly affecting people right now in today's world due to the COVID virus. How can you now have a regular time to call in people and see if there's progress because it's one thing to be bold about the changes you're going to make and to be bold about who you're going to be but if you're not constantly calling in you're not going to have any level of accountability so call people in another thing that's important to do as you're calling in is to ensure that people know that they're not going to be fired for revealing certain things that bother them you know this is going to be a very uncomfortable process for many companies because a lot of times you're going to have to come to terms with some things that might have escaped your lens because of a privilege that exists. You are now in a position as an organization to listen and to demystify these stigmas. 
what are the resources that are now needed for everyone to feel like they are part of the company, okay? After you call people in, it's time to detect the cracks. You know, when you're calling people in, you're going to hear a lot of people with a lot of complaints and very, very, very valid complaints. But how are you going to make sure that this doesn't happen again? It's by detecting the cracks. What in the system allowed for this to slip through everyone before? How do you make sure that this doesn't happen again? How can you put a force, a task force in, in, in plan and in, in motion so that these things don't slip through the cracks again? How will you detect the cracks? And who are the people that will make sure it doesn't happen again? What are the resources that you will now invest in to ensure that this doesn't happen again? This leads me to the last letter, E, embrace flexibility. With the virus, we've seen that a lot of companies have been forced to send their employees home. They've been forced to come up with virtual options to make sure that business is still moving, business stays booming, and business stays operating. And what that has revealed is that it is possible to work from home if you put certain systems in place. So, will you be flexible with the people you hire? Will you be flexible when someone that has a different ability is applying for your job and can do your job and is very competent, but maybe that person needs to be home? Will you hire that person? Will you be more mindful of people who are immunocompromised? Will you create a safe space in your workplace so that anyone who's immunocompromised can feel like they can say they're immunocompromised and not feel like something is wrong with them? How will you make sure that this is something that you're including in your company culture? Embrace flexibility. Now, I'm not saying that you should now make sure your workforce is all virtual. All I'm saying is that if you create a culture where people feel like they can come to you if they have certain things that you might not physically see or certain things that you can physically see, they understand that they are not gonna be stigmatized. Always check in. Be bold about who you are. Constantly call in. Detect the cracks. And embrace flexibility. I firmly believe that if we try these five methods, we'll be better prepared for crisis. But we'll also, more importantly, be able to protect our colleagues, our neighbors, and our friends during moments of unforeseen disasters or unpredictable moments. Always check in, be bold about who you are, consistently call in, detect the cracks, and embrace flexibility. Till the next episode, use your difference to make a difference.